Hi, this is Liz. I'm a cottagecore style digital nomad. I built my cottagecore wardrobe entirely without fast fashion and so can you. And no, it's not expensive. The cottagecore lifestyle is centered around the idea of living a slow life close to nature and around traditional crafts such as sewing or knitting. So a cottagecore lifestyle and fast fashion should be mutually exclusive from the start, right? Of course, it's never that simple. Ever since cottagecore started gaining popularity, fast fashion brands have hopped on the bandwagon and started offering all the gorgeous milkmaid dresses, puff sleeve blouses and high-waisted skirts that make our cottagecore hearts beat faster. And I cannot blame anyone for falling in love with these pieces. Most of us are aware by now that avoiding fast fashion is a good idea for various ethical and climate reasons. But many of us are also on a budget and believe that fast fashion is the only option they can afford. I'm here to tell you that this is not true. I'm going to share with you exactly how I built my cottage core wardrobe without ever setting foot in a fast fashion store or on a fast fashion website while even saving money. And I'm going to show you plenty of cottagecore outfit examples from my wardrobe. Are you ready? Also, just as a side note, I offer these ideas from my point of view as a woman dressing cottagecore, but you will notice that they apply to other fashion styles as well as to other genders. Let's dive in. Swap events. The first idea I would like to share with you is to attend swap events. If you are not familiar with the concept, it's an event where every attendee can bring some pieces of clothing they don't wear anymore, put them on a hanger, and then browse through the clothing items the other attendees have brought to the event. You can then take home the items you like entirely for free. Swap events have become very popular throughout the past 10 years and it's definitely worth checking if there are any in your area as well. Not only are they a lot of fun, they are an amazing way to swap out items you don't even wear anymore for completely new ones entirely for free. I've been attending multiple swap events a year throughout the past years and acquired some of my favorite items this way. Honestly. I got some pieces there that really just made me wonder how someone would ever give those treasures up. Now of course these events are not like a store. You will never know what you're going to find there and whether or not it's going to be your size, which is really up to luck in this case. So I recommend attending these events regularly. Sometimes you might find nothing you like. Sometimes you might find 10 items you absolutely love. Over time will even out and you will find gorgeous pieces without spending any money while being super sustainable at the same time. Gosh, I love swap events. Clothing from friends. I have a friend who doesn't buy clothes. At all. Ever. And you couldn't tell. She is neither weird nor dressed in rags. She's just frugal and good at building outfits out of items her friends are trying to get rid of. While this extreme form of not buying clothes is definitely not for everyone, I still love the idea of swapping or selling items within my family or friend circle instead of buying something new. When I told a friend I was looking for a bathrobe, she happily informed me that she currently wanted to sell her high quality one that was as good as new and we sealed the deal, zero emissions cost. When another friend ordered an item and noticed the size was off, she gifted it to me knowing it would fit me instead of returning it. Of course this doesn't always work, but it is worth a try to find out if there is someone in your immediate family or friend circle who is trying to get rid of what you're looking for. Sewing, altering, 
knitting. If you can't sew or knit, don't skip this part. Hear me out on this. Of course, being able to sew or knit your own clothes is the dream if you want to dress cottage core and avoid fast fashion. I myself am still learning and who knows, maybe one day I'll make all my clothing myself. If learning to sew appears too overwhelming, try learning how to make one type of garment first. For instance, I first made some high waist cottage core midi skirts with my mom, which I hold very dear. Once you have your measurements and maybe a pattern, the process will always be the same, which will help you gather experience and maybe result in five beautiful new skirts within a single weekend. Fabric can be quite expensive as well, so I recommend keeping your eyes peeled for fabric bargains, such as fabric your grandma dug up in her basement, fabric that was not originally meant for clothes, such as blankets, curtains or tablecloths, or fabrics from flea markets or thrift stores, which I will be talking about in a minute anyway. My friend, who doesn't buy clothes, started knitting this year and has already knitted socks and clothing items that look absolutely stunning. It's really not witchcraft if you put your mind to it. If you can't sew or knit yourself, but know someone who can, these handmade items make for great gifts, so maybe drop them a hint in time for your next birthday. Often we don't even have to sew new garments. Some small alterations can change the look of a piece of clothing entirely or make it fit better. And I swear to you, you can make some of those alterations without any sewing experience. I love wearing high-waisted skirts, but notice that the length of many sweaters and tops doesn't go well with them. In my own perfect world, everything would be cropped at the waist. So I started cropping sweaters and tops and added an elastic band to create a fitted waist. And it is so easy, literally anyone can do it. You don't even need a sewing machine, you can do this by hand. All you need is some pins, a needle, thread in a matching color and an elastic band, all of which you can get at regular drugstores or supermarkets. I also took in the waist of my hiking pants to fit me without a sewing machine, following an easy YouTube tutorial. And the pants now fit perfectly. You don't even need much sewing knowledge or equipment to make some alterations yourself. Start small and you'll be amazed what you can do yourself if you allow yourself to try it. Please note that with all these tips so far, we are still within the realm of for free or almost for free. Flea markets. For a long time I thought I would never find anything fashionable at a flea market. But in recent years I discovered that flea markets are a literal cottage core gold mine. Not only do sellers sometimes offer actual old vintage pieces, but in my area prices at flea markets are very low and you can get items in fantastic condition for almost no money. As with swap events, finding a piece you like that fits you is up to luck at flea markets, but if you go regularly, I'm sure you will eventually dig up some treasures. All the options I mentioned so far, including flea markets, are quite literally slow fashion. You cannot just go there with a specific piece in mind, pick up the one that you need, the color that you like and the size that fits you. All these options feed into a long-term strategy of building your wardrobe that I will talk about at the end of the video. Local thrift stores Local thrift stores are a very sustainable way of shopping as garments are pre-loved and don't have to travel far if they are being sold by locals. And while you will have to spend some money on the items, they might either still be more affordable than fast fashion or higher quality compared to what you would get for the same price at a fast fashion store. 
Every garment that is bought secondhand instead of new is so much more sustainable than a garment that has been newly produced and sold, using large amounts of resources such as water and often traveling vast distances across the globe causing emissions. Online thrift stores Online thrift stores offer a shopping experience that is very similar to buying at a regular online store. On platforms such as Vinted in Europe or ThreadUp in the US, there are so many pre-loved items on offer that you will often be able to pick exactly what you want while saving money compared to buying new and being way more sustainable. And while buying items that have to be shipped across the country is not quite as sustainable as thrifting locally, it is still preferable to producing and shipping an entirely new garment. Online thrift stores are what made me abandon fast fashion once and for all. I will find almost every garment I could want or need there. What is important to note here is that of course you will find lots of fast fashion items on these platforms and you will spot me wearing secondhand items from these brands. So technically you could call this cheating. However, there is a huge difference between buying these garments from the store versus buying them secondhand as no additional resources will be used to produce a new garment. Local sellers If I have exhausted all secondhand options and have to buy something new, I will always consider local sellers first. Now this is a bit tricky as even local stores and markets sell items that have traveled around the globe and maybe even have been produced under questionable working conditions. If you have the possibility, look for products that are sourced, produced and sold locally. I bought my favorite headband at a local market from a seller who sold wool products from their own alpacas. I could verify the excellent living conditions of the animals on the local farm as well as trace the entire local production chain up to the finished product. Items like these will often be on the pricier side, but if you can afford them, I recommend getting a high quality item and keeping, wearing and loving it for years to come. I'm also a huge fan of Etsy. While you can now buy pretty much everything from everywhere on the platform, I personally still use it to find small businesses within a reasonable geographic range that offer unique handmade products that don't have to be shipped too far. Customized Garments so far, I gave you a whole bunch of ideas for building your cottage core wardrobe that are perfectly suitable if you are budget conscious. Customized garments are something you will have to spend money on. And even though these garments might be worth it and might last you for decades, I am aware that spending 200 bucks or even more on a single garment is simply not an option for many. I still want to throw this in here as it is a sustainable way of buying clothing. Having a local dressmaker sew a clothing item for you according to your measurements guarantees that the garment will fit perfectly. This makes sense if you know that you will be wearing this item for years because your size or taste in fashion doesn't change as much. Having garments professionally altered is another sustainable way to make sure your clothes fit perfectly even if your size or taste changes. Instead of buying something new if a garment doesn't fit properly anymore, consider getting it altered at a fraction of the cost. This is also a fantastic option if you find an item you love at a flea market or swap event, but it's not quite the right size. Very often it can easily be altered to fit. I thrifted this beautiful cottagecore skirt and loved the print, but its original paperback waist looked pretty um, unflattering as it effectively hit my waist. I had it altered to have a regular waist with belt loops and now it's perfect. Fair fashion brands. 
If there is no option to buy something secondhand and you do have to order from an online shop, there are some brands that are still better options than others. Apart from sustainability aspects such as being climate neutral or even climate positive, there are other factors I take into account such as transparency and verifiability regarding the working conditions of the people who sew my garments. I will refuse to buy from brands that don't offer decent working conditions and appropriate pay for their employees, as well as transparent information for us customers about the topic. It's a huge topic that would merit its own video. There are brand directories such as Good On You that provide a sustainability rating for many brands. These brands, as well as smaller fair fashion brands that provide comprehensive info on the aforementioned topics on their website, are the ones I will look to in the rare case that I buy something new. Of course, we cannot expect these items to be as affordable as fast fashion if we want the people who make our clothes to get paid decent wages. There are also materials that I will generally only buy secondhand for ethical reasons. While real fur is completely out of the question, I do acknowledge that many materials such as leather, wool or sheepskin have amazing properties that I love for their durability or warmth. As I do not eat meat, I will also not buy any new items containing material from dead animals. While I do own quite a few leather items such as my belt or my backpack, they are all secondhand. In the end, one thing needs to be said. The most sustainable and most ethical garment is the one that is not produced. Buying fewer clothes in general should always be the first step we take. And quitting fast fashion as well as buying less is so much easier if we have a long-term strategy to building our wardrobe. So here are some additional tips I can give you when it comes to building your cottage core wardrobe without fast fashion. Ideally, we want to build our wardrobe in a way that doesn't force us to buy something in a hurry because we have an event coming up. We can achieve this by picking up items we can easily mix and match to create a large number of outfit combos that we can dress up or down, so we can cover all sorts of events that we might need an outfit for. We often feel as if we need a new outfit for each occasion, but it is perfectly fine to keep wearing the pieces we love. I lived abroad for a while and could only take one suitcase worth of clothing for more than 7 months. I would still get compliments for how put together I looked, even though I kept wearing the same 10 items on rotation. Dressing well has nothing to do with the number of clothing items we own. Buying fewer clothes, ideally of higher quality, should be our goal when trying to quit fast fashion and is perfectly in line with what the cottagecore lifestyle stands for. Having a color scheme in your wardrobe can also help reduce the number of items you need as everything within your color range will go together. And the same is true for having an outfit formula. Knowing which types of outfits work well for us reduces the amount of trial and error and helps us keep a capsule wardrobe of manageable size. I love to wear high-waisted skirts and pants with cropped or belted tops that accentuate the waist. With this outfit formula in mind, I know what to look for and can pick out the items that will go with the rest of my wardrobe. Over time, you will develop a good feeling for the type of items you are really going to wear and can pick them up when the opportunity arises. I also had to shift my own mindset when it comes to clothing. I unsubscribed from all fast fashion newsletters as they would frequently tempt me by creating a desire for something I previously didn't even know existed. We so often feel as if we need one specific item from a specific brand right now and scrolling through social media usually doesn't really help with that. Whenever I see an item I like online, I will now focus on recreating the look instead of just clicking the order button for one specific item. 
I will try to find similar items in my own wardrobe or second hand to recreate the outfit I like. Of course this doesn't provide the instant gratification that buying an item will give us, but that's precisely the point. Don't get me wrong, fashion can and should be fun. There is nothing wrong with being happy and excited about finally getting that new dress you've been wanting for so long. But quitting fast fashion will be so much easier if we manage to see garments for what they are, clothing items instead of suppliers of instant serotonin boosts. Have you used any of these tips for avoiding fast fashion? Or do you have additional tips I haven't mentioned? Please let us know.